Hey, so in this video, I'll be talking about making felt puppets and fuzzy fabrics using my new Geometry Notes tool, Feltmaker. Feltmaker can be used to achieve any fuzzy look from a basic felt to a needle look, a volume felt, or fabric fuzz. This is kind of a follow-up to my previous video on this felt generator. I've been working hard updating it, making it even better, and the change is so numerous that I've just decided to release a new free option for it too, so everybody can try it for themselves. If you click the link in the description, you'll find the Gumroad page for Feltmaker and Feltmaker Lite. Now, Feltmaker Lite comes with most of the basic components, but I'll walk you through the tool and we'll cover the differences later on. Once you get the tool and open the file, you'll find a felty Suzanne on the left, the felt material on the upper right corner, and the geometry nodes on the lower right. The modifiers option is there, and no matter the version, the layout will roughly be the same. Feltmaker Lite comes with a surface felt in Suzanne demo, whilst the Pro version comes with another volume felt tool and a demo for that, a fabric demo for surface fuzz effects, as well as not one, but two demo files. This animated frog character to showcase the animation felt pipeline, and this lantern model to showcase the surface fuzz on fabric, and volume felt for the light inside. Feltmaker Pro is also fully compatible with the asset library, so you can quickly drag and drop it into your project when you save the file in your asset library directory, which you can find in your Blender settings. However, for this video, I'll apply the felt to a new model to show how to apply this to any of your objects. I have this fish model I want to transform, so to get my tool in this file, I'll go into File, Append, and select the file where I've downloaded it. Then, I'll go into this Geonode folder and select the Feltmaker tool or Feltmaker light. After that's done, I'll select my object, make a new Geonode, and pick the Feltmaker node. Your model should now look a lot more fluffy. With Feltmaker Pro, I could have also simply drag and dropped the Geometry Nodes tool onto my model from the asset library. If you use Feltmaker Lite, you'll also be appending a curves collection, which you can just disable in the hierarchy. This is because Feltmaker Lite uses these as the felt strings to scatter on the mesh, whereas the paid version uses procedural curves, which are much cleaner. Now, I'll work you through the different settings of the felt, starting with this viewport slash render density. Having a viewport density option will allow you to work on the felt without killing your PC. After that, you'll find your material slot. Feltmaker now comes with three shader setups that you can find here, a default look, a harsher one, and a softer one. However, please note that Feltmaker Lite only comes with the default shader. Then, you'll find your overall hair scale over here, and the random scale slider which will allow you to make it more realistic. Hair thickness is pretty self-explanatory, as it will just change how thick your hair is, and the samples will allow you to specify the amount of geometry on the strands. So, the closer up you are, the higher you want it, and vice versa. But yeah, so Feltmaker Lite thus comes with all the basics for any fluffy mesh. But if you want a more realistic look and you want to animate your felt whilst also optimizing the render times, you might consider getting Feltmaker Pro. With Feltmaker Pro, you get the option to flatten the hair in order to create a needle felt look. To mimic this sort of look in real life, where the strands of hair are a lot closer to the fabric. You can see it a lot on the face of this fisherman character. Here, this needle look also helps to keep a lot of the angles from the original model. You'll also find this keep base geometry tick box, which can be used to either keep some geometry under your felt if you don't want to put the density sky high, or if you want to create a simple surface fuzz to any fabric, like in this example, where the fuzz helps sell the softness of the fabric. With Feltmaker Pro, you'll notice many added tabs and parameters, starting with this flyaway tab, which are those stray strands that fly off the model and add a lot of realism. You'll find a probability slider and a scale multiplier, which will allow you to get the desired look, with the thickness automatically adjusting following the size multiplier. There's also an extra flatten setting for the flyaway to be even more specific on the look. If you're rendering some close-ups or just want some extra realism, you might notice something missing. Looking at real-life puppet, like this one here, you'll notice that after a bit of use, they will naturally accumulate little spots of dirt and particles inside of the felt. In order to recreate this, I've made a handy dirt tab, which scatters dirt particles on your felt. You can specify their density, scale, and material here, and also hide them in viewport for performance reasons. There's also this dirt offset 
offset, which you might want to play around with to make the dirt more or less on the surface of your mesh. This dirt parameter is only for close-ups or really high fidelity renders. So in my case with this fish, I'm probably not gonna use it. This fish model is also rigged and animated. And now I wanna carry that animation through with the felt. By default, the felt will stick to your mesh perfectly, but you might wanna recreate the deformation that would happen in real life, as any felt stop motion puppet will have marks left there by the animators animating frame by frame for the final pictures, and replicating this will allow your final result to be a lot more realistic. So if you keep it at zero, it will not be animated, and then if you change it to one, it will be animated at every frame, to every other frame, etc, etc. If you want to recreate that stop motion choppy look, you might want to put it to 2, 2.53, the higher up, the more choppy it will look like. And you can also adjust the animation intensity with this new slider, which will dictate how much the strands will rotate every time. But if you want to push the realism further, you might want the animation to only happen in areas that get deformed. And with Felt Maker, that's pretty quick and easy. Just duplicate your final animated mesh as well as its rig and offset its animation by whatever the stepped animation value is set to. Now please note that the delayed duplicate doesn't have the felt modifier and is not visible in rendered view. Then select your original model and you can tick the debug box to see your areas of deformation. And you can then adjust the fall off to whatever your desired look is. Now you might also want your animation to have that stepped look. And in order to do that, you can go in your curves editor and add the stepped modifier to your curves. However, this can be a bit manual and I would recommend to get this free stop mo add-on that automatically puts the step modifier on all the animation curves of the selected object, making the process a lot less manual. Finally, the extra tab is where you'll find a lot of the optimization tools to make render times shorter or other useful features such as including or not the spiky strands of hair for making different looks or vertex masking to have a region specific felt. Just select Select some vertices on your model in edit mode, assign them to a mask, and assign that mask to the geo node. The camera optimization is in this area, and they'll take your active camera as a reference. There's a few different options, the first one being backface calling, which will basically remove the felts that are on the other side not facing the camera. Then there's camera culling, which will basically remove the felt that's outside of the view frame. Now the way camera culling works is you want to put the focal length of your camera in this slot. And in order to find out what the value is, you want to click on your camera and go in this tab where you'll find your focal length value, and you can either copy paste it, or if it's animated, you can right click copy as a new driver, and then paste that in the geo node settings. Then just input your aspect ratio like 1920 by 1080 or 16 by nine, or if you're rendering like a squared image, you can keep it at one by one. And then now you can see that if the camera gets too close, what's outside of the borders will not be rendered. There's also this neat little debug tick box to allow you to see what the plane of reference looks like, and you can add a bit of padding here. Finally, you'll find this holdout section over here, which will allow you to recreate stuff like in this picture where the eyes are basically holdouts for the felt. So any strands of hairs that are in these eyes will get deleted and you can input a mesh, a collection, and then you can adjust the offsets to your desired look in case it doesn't fit exactly well. So the felt effect is now complete, but it's missing its material. By default, the material will look something like that with a default preset shader with Feltmaker Lite and two more shaders with Feltmaker Pro for a woolen and plastic look. You can change the UV grid image here for whichever image you wanna use, and I've also added this procedural shading setup for any noise or effect you want to apply. And that's about it for the fish. Just hit render and you're good to go. Finally, I'll quickly go over the felt volume tool that you have with Felt Maker Pro, which was designed to recreate effects like these, where the strings are scattered throughout the mesh, not just on its surface. The settings are roughly the same, and it should just be a bit longer to render because of the density of hair. As I said before, with Felt Maker Pro, you'll anyways find a template for the volume felt, along with a template for the fabric fuzz and regular felt, as well as these two files for you to play around with. And just for you to be fully aware, 
Felt Maker Lite is totally free to grab and will come with these settings. You can download either versions on Gumroad, the link is in the description, but I'll keep updating the tool with the feedback. Feel free to send me any of your creation or let me know if you have any issues, either in the comment section below or on my Instagram page. You can consider subscribing if you like what I do. And that's about it. Bye.